so this is, if you like, a sort of third area of uh, stroke-related work, which is also really, really important. Um, and it's also probably gone a bit under the radar as well. Um, so small vessel disease is not the big blood vessels are called big nasty strokes. It's the much smaller blood vessels when they get deep down into the brain, you know, trying to supply the oxygen and the energy and get rid of the waste products and so on. Um, and it's a much more slow process and uh, it's a much more gradual sort of insidious process. And so people quite often don't really realize that they're affected by it until you know, something else happens, like for some reason they have to go and have a brain scan or they might have a little stroke because small vessel disease actually causes about a quarter of ischemic strokes and most uh, is an underlying pathology in most um, big hemorrhagic strokes in older people. Um, or they go to a memory clinic because they're concerned about, you know, cognitive function. Um, so it can end up that people go to a bunch of different clinical services. And I think that's part of the problem because things aren't always as joined up as they should be. So we're now beginning to get much more of an understanding about what's actually going wrong in these small blood vessels and how could we manage it better? Because it's not just a small version of the same things that cause big bad strokes it, it there are some important differences um so we're beginning to understand more about what goes wrong with the lining of the blood vessels and how we might be able to help um maintain the health of those blood vessels and just how important it is this is probably where you know lifestyle factors have a big impact things like exercise diet avoiding smoking reducing salt content in your food things like that can probably have quite a massive effect. So th that's an area of major progress.